Overwatch 2 died the moment Blizzard decided to cut down on the PvE content. That's not a controversial statement of course, but it must be said. The entire Overwatch 2 endeavor is frankly just a waste of time and resources. All they did was rework a few characters, change the lighting and made new models for everybody. We can go into much detail, but the truth is, as someone who played OG Overwatch, I can say that, at least to the casual gamer, the transition to Overwatch 2 didn't do much. It was still the Overwatch experience. Well, not anymore, apparently. Hello dear viewer, I am the Great Terlik and today we are discussing Overwatch 2, the game that's slowly turning into a clone of itself. What do I mean by that you may ask? Well, it is about time to introduce our second character in the story. Paladins Champions of the Realm Paladins is just like Overwatch a hero shooter which came just a few months after the aforementioned Blizzard staple. Despite the fact that it takes way longer for a game to come out, people labeled Paladins an Overwatch clone. Yes, Overwatch had been revealed way earlier, but the fact is, people expected Overwatch to be big, as at the time Blizzard was still the goat of video game companies, but no one was expecting how big the game actually ended up being. So you can't really claim that Paladins was the response to the success of Overwatch. The reputation of the company behind Paladins, High res Entertainment, did not help Paladins case as they were known for hopping on trends such as the MOBA craze of the early 2010s with their pretty good actually third person MOBA, Smite. Even today, in the eyes of many players, Paladins is still just an Overwatch clone. However, Paladins has never been a one-to-one -one recreation of Overwatch. The game has gone through many changes over the years, but the most well-known and current version of Paladins differs from Overwatch by a lot. The game has items you buy through the course of play, loadouts with perks that change the way your abilities work on a relatively small but noticeable scale, and the main game mode which is more like a combination of Overwatch's 2 CP and payload maps with multiple rounds. Another major difference between the games is Paladin's approach to healing, which will be important later. Now that you have been introduced to Paladins, what do I mean by Overwatch 2 slowly turning into its own clone? Well you see, while Blizzard was working on the big sequel update thingy, Paladins was thriving and when the patch finally came out, an interesting trend began which did not go unnoticed by Paladins players. The very first step Overwatch took into becoming more like Paladins was going from a 6v6 to 5v5, an innocent seeming change, but it was just an omen for the future. The whole concept of Overwatch 2, the initial PvE revealed by Blizzard, also could be seen as a step towards Paladins, as they added talents which have been in Paladins for years. Those however are not the main topics we'll be talking about today. No, instead we'll discuss the latest update to Overwatch 2, Season 9 Champions. Season 9 makes three major changes to the game, all of which are inching it closer to its supposed copy. Actually, inching is the wrong term, more like leaping towards, or so people say. The truth is that I'm writing this part before playing the new season for the first time. I'll play it after explaining why these changes might make Overwatch more like Paladins and finish this script with the conclusion as to whether or not the hypothesis ends up being a theorem. I mean, fact. I showed my maths affinity there for a sec. The biggest culprit for our claim is the change to Overwatch 2's healing system. For context, since day one Overwatch had health packs spread throughout its maps. You go, pick it up, you gain some health and the pack goes on cooldown. It's simple and frankly it's annoying. Paladins on the other hand doesn't have health packs and instead if you spend a couple seconds out of combat you heal automatically. There has been such a mechanic in Overwatch as well, since day one in fact. However, at first it was just for the healer Mercy. With the introduction of role passives in Overwatch 2, this ability was given to all healers. With the latest update, however, all characters now have this ability and supports just get to heal faster. Essentially, they went from health packs to passive healing, just like Paladins. But that's not all. One of Paladins original items was called Cauterize. It made it so that whenever you hit a target, they would have reduced healing for a while. 
Eventually this became a passive ability for all champions, as the item was a must buy every game, even when playing casually. Well as of season 9 the raw passive for damage dealers is, and I quote, damaging an enemy temporarily reduces their healing received. It's cauterized. They just added cauterized for damage dealers. Now, the main difference is that in Overwatch 2 the healing reduction is a flat 20% throughout the entire game, while in Paladins it grows as the game progresses, up to 90%. While this makes healers less effective as the game progresses, Paladins healers tend to have more to offer than raw heals, at least most of them. These changes are the main reason people tend to say the update just makes the game feel more like Paladins, but that is of course not all. On the subject of health, depending on the gameplay I've used for the background thus far, you might have noticed that there is about a digit difference between Paladins and Overwatch 2. In the early years, most tanks in Overwatch had twice or even thrice the health of the standard character, while in Paladins they tend to not go too much above double unless the character has a ridiculously big hitbox, like Yagoroth. This yet again changed with the Overwatch 2 update. Overwatch 2 maintained the larger health difference in the roles in its main game mode, Rogue Q, but reduced tank's health making it closer to Paladins, outside of it. Even so, one thing remained, time to kill. Now, there is no way I am claiming that the TTK in either of these games is high, but to me, at least, it feels longer in Paladins. It might have something to do with the fact that in Paladins, most one-shot abilities are ultimates. That's not really the case in Overwatch. Let's look at an example, shall we? In one corner we have Junkrat, and on the other, Dredge. Both are characters with grenade launchers, one ability which inhibits enemies movement, a movement ability of their own, a bigger damage ability and an ultimate that deals a lot of damage. Yes, in the case of Junkrat, the big damage ability and movement abilities are one and the same, but he has two charges, so it's fair game. Dredge has a standard grenade launcher, a triple barrage of grenades which deals slightly more damage but take a while to detonate, a harpoon which deals damage and slows, a portal and finally the ultimate a tentacled explosion that deals massive damage and knocks foes back. On the other hand, Junkrat has also the standard grenade launcher, a bear trap that roots enemies, a landmine which can then be detonated, dealing large damage and knocking back foes, allowing for some good movement, and lastly the ultimate, a massive damage explosion on a tire. Junkrat also has a passive ability where he drops a couple weak grenades upon death, if you take a look at both of these characters' damage numbers, you notice that Junkrat's lowest damage non-ultimate ability is the Trap, dealing 100 damage, half the standard character's health pool, at least before. Dredge, on the other hand, has only one non-ultimate ability which deals more than half the standard health, and that's the Triple Barrage, which I remind you takes a couple seconds to detonate. Of course, Dredge can kill you very quickly, but he requires setup, while Junkrat can two-shot most enemies who are on tanks by just using his mines and a single grenade. As you might have guessed, this might not be the case anymore. As of Season 9, all characters have more health, around 25% more on average. Damage numbers are still the same for the most part though, thus the TTG goes up. Just like Paladins, this is of course the weakest argument, unlike our final point. Ah, hitboxes, one of the most important parts of any game. Overwatch had the best hitboxes in any game at its time, an industry leader, if you will. Paladins, on the other hand, didn't. Weird, terrible and frankly just ridiculous hitboxes was what Paladins became known for, yet for reasons unknown to the same person, Blizzard's Overwatch 2 team decided that good hitboxes are just not good for a hero shooter and have thus increased the hitboxes of all projectiles, which didn't already have ridiculous hitboxes to begin with. Essentially, you no longer need to try too hard to hit someone, if you look in their general direction you likely hit them. At least that's what people say. Over the years, Paladins has somewhat improved its hitboxes and now I wonder if it will feel better than Overwatch 2 at this point. Well, there is only one way to find out. Let's play! So, I literally just finished the final game of my gaming session. 
I began by playing 3 rounds of Paladins and then went on to play about 5 rounds of Overwatch 2. And what's my conclusion? Well, my honest opinion. Everyone who claims Overwatch 2 now feels like Paladins is absolutely wrong. The game still feels like it always used to be. Extremely fast-paced and honestly somewhat irritating games during which you are either walking back to the point or in the middle of a fight and barely can understand what's going on around you. Okay, that is a bit of a hyperbole, but you get what I mean, it is still Overwatch. Seriously though, the health changes are most noticeable of all, as I found myself quite honestly getting out of fights with very low health where I would have died normally. The new damage roll passive is barely noticeable, the passive killing is nice, I guess, but also niche, and the hitboxes are somewhat different. I definitely felt like a couple characters, like Zenyatta, could hit shots easier. However, neither hit scans nor heroes who easily hit their shots before, like Torbjorn or Junkrat, felt any easier or harder than before. I think in a calm situation, like the practice range, the new hitboxes seem way worse than they actually are during a real fight. Overall, Overwatch 2 is still itself, for better or for worse. Now, if I were to say which of these two games feels better in general, let me just preface this by saying I've been playing Overwatch since early 2018 and Paladins since the middle of that same year because a friend didn't want to spend the money on Overwatch. At the time, I would have stood by Overwatch all the way, but today, honestly, from the casual's point of view, I'd have to give it to Paladins. The game has more colorful characters with bigger variety thanks to the loadouts and items, and the mount system gets rid of one of the most annoying parts of Overwatch, at least to me. The slow march back to the point. If there is one thing that Overwatch 2 should actually copy from Paladins, that's the one. Copy the mounts. You don't even need to copy them from Paladins. Blizzard's own MOBA, Heroes of the Storm, has had mounts. For a long time. I wonder if that game's still going. Eh, who knows. And with that we come to an end. I'd pretty much appreciate it if you left a like, comment, subscribed and maybe even press the bell to make sure you don't miss any uploads from me. You don't have to do all of that of course, but just so you know, I'm not responsible for what will happen if you don't. Check out this video that YouTube thinks you might like and I hope you enjoyed what you watched enough to keep watching. Have a good one. Bye.